Hello wonderful person and welcome to What The Math. This is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about dual or double asteroids. Now there's actually surprisingly quite a lot of these babies out there and in today's video what we're going to discover is one by the name of Bora Sisi and its partner Pabu. We're also going to try to collide them with our planet Earth using the Universe Sandbox. So if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now and welcome to What The Math. So not surprisingly, this is actually not uh, Bora Sisi or Pabu, uh, the asteroids that I actually wanted to talk about. This uh, specific asteroid right here is Antiope B and Antiope A, and as you can see, these are actual asteroids orbiting in Kuiper's belt uh, that uh, orbit around one another relatively close. And there's quite a lot of these dual asteroids out there that we have discovered with a relatively similar size and also relatively similar orbit. Let me just show you one more that we have in universe uh, in, in Space Engine here. And specifically, I'm talking about another uh, binary system of asteroids known as Hermes. These look a little bit different. Um, they have slightly different shape and they're a little bit farther away from one, one another. Uh, but uh, they are also relatively similar in terms of size. Um, diameter here is about 600 meters and also 540 meters. And so they have a kind of a berry center right here in the middle, which you can kind of see if I if I click the orbit. So there is the berry center and they kind of orbit around one another. But the asteroid I really wanted to talk about is named uh, Bora Sisi. This is actually from, uh, from a fiction book by Kurt Vonnegut, where uh, Bora Sisi is a kind of a god, a sun god, and it has a partner, Pabu, which is the moon god. But unfortunately, in Space Engine, this hasn't really been updated in a while because it still is a solitary object. So if I actually spin it, it sort of just spins by itself. And this object is actually very huge. In comparison to previous asteroids, it's actually it's something like uh, 400 times bigger. It's about 150 kilometers in diameter. And its uh, partner, Pabu, is about the same in terms of size. So there's actually quite a, quite a few of these um, binary asteroids we found, but not so many where uh, both objects are relatively similar in size. So here's actually an example of an asteroid that uh, is relatively large, but its partner is not. So this is uh, an asteroid known as 22 Calliope, and um, the asteroid itself is about 160 kilometers, but its partner is much smaller at around, uh, I think it's about 20 kilometers, 28 kilometers in diameter. Um, and there's actually a lot of these binary systems we found, but not as many where both objects are large. So as a matter of fact, the three I can think of are 90 Antiope, which I showed you in, in the beginning, Hermes, which was the second one, and of course, Bora Sisi, uh, which is an asteroid we discovered back in 1999, and its partner Pabu. So I really hope that one day Space Engine updates these uh, because this would be really, really awesome to, uh, if it actually had an actual partner. But I guess one of the reasons I actually wanted to talk about these binary asteroids is not really the fact that they are out there, but about the way that they actually form. Now, let me go to one of the previous ones, like for example, Hermes, just to kind of demonstrate this to you um, in terms of science. Now, the interesting thing about it, oh, this is a little bit too fast. The interesting thing about these asteroids is um, the way they may have actually um, been created. So there's something called YORP effect, which stands for Yarkovsky okif radzievsky padak, padak effect. So very, very mouthfully name for an effect that's actually really, really simple. So as an asteroid orbits the sun and as it sort of spins around, if it's not a perfect ellipse, which of course it's not because it's uh, very jaded, it has a lot of different surface features, um, as the sun essentially hits the asteroid, so like the sun rays as they hit the asteroid, they actually slightly accelerate its spin. And this YARP effect um, is uh, very, very obvious with small asteroids, but um, even with large asteroids over millions of years, this asteroid might actually accelerate its spin and start spinning even faster and faster, and at some point throw off a part of it, creating a binary system. Now, we think that a lot of these um, equally sized binary systems were formed that way because there is really no better explanation for it right now. So we think that this YARP effect, um, or I guess you could call it YORP effect, is essentially responsible for the creation of all of these interesting binary systems where both chunks are kind of equal. Uh, but anyway, let's actually go into Universe Sandbox and let's see what happens if one of these objects, specifically, of course, Bora Sisi, 
this asteroid right here and its imaginary friend that is not in Space Engine by the name of Pabu came to visit Earth and if they actually decided to collide with it. So this object is about 150 kilometers in diameter and Pabu is about 145. And so we're going to create them and see what happens if they collide with Earth. And now in Universe Sandbox uh, 2, or I guess you can call it Universe Sandbox Square, we're going to take a look at Boris CC in comparison to Earth and then possibly collide it with our beautiful planet. Now, unfortunately, in this game, uh, Boris CC is not as jaded and as uh, textured as it was in Space Engine. It's just sort of a kind of a round looking object that's about 90 kilometers um, in radius. So just a little bit bigger than it should be. But you know what? That's better than nothing. It also doesn't seem to have its partner, Pabu, so we may have to uh, create it from scratch. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and launch this beautiful object at our planet and then see what happens. Can you guess what's going to happen? Well, I'm guessing total and ultimate destruction, but you never know. And so here are Boris, CC, and Pabu. They're sort of orbiting around one another and they're sort of approaching Earth. Um, although I'm not sure how long they'll be orbiting around each other because as soon as they approach Earth a little bit closer, um, the Earth gravity will actually take over and they'll start sort of falling onto our planet. Now, currently, the orbital distance between them is a few thousand kilometers and the maximum orbital distance is about 4,500 kilometers, so it's about 4,500 kilometers um, with a relatively um, high eccentricity of about... 0.45, so about 45% eccentricity. But um, at some point, when they reach Earth a little bit closer, they'll stop moving so much and they'll actually just begin falling. Now, I'm guessing there's going to be auto destruction on the planet Earth, but you never know. Things might actually survive. Their total velocity here is already over 10 kilometers per second, and it will most likely increase to about 12 kilometers per second the closer to Earth they get. And the, that's the old Boris EC I had from before. It's just kind of orbiting there, but this was just used for a comparison in terms of size. And as you can see right now, they actually stop or stopped orbiting each other. And they're just kind of falling. So both of them are about 100 something, 150-ish kilometers um, in diameter, even though it, here it's a little bit larger actually. Uh, but nevertheless, they're about to fall into our planet and very likely cause yet another extinction. Now, if ever there is a binary asteroid that approaches Earth, it is going to cause double the damage that, from what a usual asteroid would cause, obviously, because there is double the mass. Uh, but in this case, it's actually very, very, very unlikely to happen because they're not very common. Even though there's at least uh, 10 of them we've found so far, that's out of thousands and millions of other asteroids. And there is your destruction. So having a binary collision, binary asteroid collision, is very unlikely to happen. Now, this uh, this collided with the Indian Ocean, very close to Indonesia and India, and chances are that everyone who lived here is already gone. But the actual collision and the actual after effects will most likely cause destruction all over the planet. As you can see, there's actually pieces of um, Borosisi and Pabu that are falling everywhere, including North America. For some reason, not South America. They seem to be pretty safe. Africa, uh, Europe, and of course Asia. So that's essentially what would happen to our beautiful planet. Uh, the temperature here hasn't really decreased that much, but the actual collision would cause tremendous earthquakes, tsunamis. Oh, okay, never mind. I was about to say very unlucky effects, but we are probably not done yet. There's a lot more collisions coming. But yeah, so this would definitely cause a lot of catastrophic effects all over the planet with a lot of the asteroid uh, remnants colliding with the rest of the planet in, uh, in the next few days, in the next few weeks, and possibly in the next few months. So as you can see, the actual destruction is absolutely tremendous. It's very, very huge. Uh, North America, Europe, Asia, uh, North Pole, even South America now are basically completely devastated. Which means that uh, most likely all of the humanity by now would probably be dead and only some creatures would actually survive. The ones that probably live somewhere underneath the ocean. Well, so that's what would happen if a uh, binary asteroid decided to collide with Earth. It's, it's an event that's very, very unlikely to happen, but if it does happen, expect 
utter destruction and death. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something over this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it and hopefully you will subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me later and as always, bye bye. And then meanwhile, why don't we actually take more of our CCs and cause a little bit more destruction by colliding them directly with our planet. Ready? Steady? Go! And let's actually increase the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius until no water remains on the surface of our planet. And here we go. Evaporation. And here is your new surface of Earth. After the complete destruction of multiple boracesis, the evaporation of water, and the temperature of close to 200 degrees Celsius. Welcome to new Earth. I think I may have gone a little bit overboard with this. Oops.